Let's turn now to Southwest Florida. Daylight revealing the catastrophic destruction by Hurricane Ian. The devastation stretching for miles with entire neighborhoods underwater. The historic storm surge crumbling parts of the Sanibel Causeway, cutting communities off from the mainland. Ian then leaving its mark over central Florida as a tropical storm dumping at least 14 inches of rain in Orlando, leading to hundreds of water rescues. And those rescue efforts going into the night, at least nine deaths have been reported, and that number is expected to rise. And we have live team coverage across the Gulf Coast. We begin with Janice in East Naples. And Janice, you were just in Tampa yesterday, so what have you been seeing along the way? Nicole, it is so devastating what we are seeing and we are just off of Alligator Alley right behind a racetrack gas station and I spoke about this during the six o'clock news that the reason why we are here is that this is one of the only areas where we're able to get a strong enough signal so that we can report live to you and that is because cell service is pretty much non existent in areas like Naples, Fort Myers and Marco Island. But Nicole, as we drove from Tampa early this morning, heading south, stopping along the way, we got a first hand look at the devastation from just south of Sarasota down to Marco Island. The west coast of Florida pummeled by Hurricane Ian in Port Charlotte. Clear signs of how powerful the winds were. This Waffle House still standing despite blown out windows and scattered debris inside. They said it's like, like uh, one of the highest recorded um, in Florida right now, so um, right now, we're just happy that uh, all of our safe, uh, the staff is safe and, you know, we're just doing the best that we can right now. And this really looks like a scene from a disaster movie. Check out this gas pump at this Shell gas station. It's completely on its side. And look at the awning. You can see it is hanging on barely. And this just gives you an idea of really how powerful the winds were. In Cape Coral, more signs of Ian's wrath. This mobile home destroyed and power poles snapped. Power lines all over the roadways. Lee County officially off the grid. It's going to take power crews some time to rebuild the power infrastructure. Here in Marco Island, they also received significant storm surge. Most of it has receded. Only some standing water like right here off of Yellowbird Street. The water is about ankle deep. It's not too bad. You still are able to drive through and even walk through. So it is good that the water receded quickly and crews here in Marco Island also worked diligently to get any debris off the roadways. But people in Fort Myers not waiting for cleanup crews, doing their own work to get things back up and running. We're basically just going on just whatever main road, there's trees, if it's going to cause more traffic or anything like that. As long as it's blocking the road where they're clearing it. And I want to share just this conversation we've had with uh, Marco Island Fire Rescue. We spoke to one of the firefighters. He stayed to ride out the storm and he said as he watched the storm surge, push in. He described it as a snake wrapped around your neck, getting tighter and tighter, just waiting and wondering when you would be able to breathe again. Thankfully, Marco Island, at least the water there has receded, but that is simply not the case in other parts of the Gulf Coast. The re rebuilding efforts, no doubt, very much underway. For now, that's the very latest reporting live in East Naples. Janice Fernandez, Local 10 News.